All right, in this particular lesson, what we're going to be looking at is representing absolute value functions as piecewise functions. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to have to understand what piecewise functions are. Uh, so I'm going to investigate that with a particular piecewise function before we get into the actual topic. Um, a piecewise function is essentially <clears throat> a function that has two or more pieces, hence the root word piece, uh, each with its own domain that combine to define an, define an overall function. So if I am looking at this first example, sketch the function defined by the piecewise function, uh, there are three pieces here. Um, the first piece in red is y is equal to x plus 4. That is in uh, slope-intercept form. So it's got a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of 1. Uh, so if I was to graph that function, uh, that would look something like that. Uh, however, as we look at the domain, uh, it says where x is less than or equal to negative 1. So the domain is restricted right at this particular point here. Um, so this part of this piece of the function does, doesn't exist. So we're only looking at this particular piece here. All right, the next piece, the green piece here, is y is equal to negative x plus 2. Again, that's in slope-intercept form. Uh, so it's got a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 2. Uh, that function would look something like this. Uh, however, if we look at the domain, uh, it's for values of x that are between and including negative 1 and 4. So our domain is restricted right where x is negative 1. So this part does not exist. And up to where x is 4, so right up to this point here. So this piece doesn't exist either. Uh, finally, let's look at the last piece of this piecewise function. y is equal to a half x minus 4. Uh, that piece, again, is in slope-intercept form. So we've got a y-intercept of negative 4, a slope of a half, so that would look something like this without domain restrictions. Um, however, <clears throat> we do have a domain restriction here. It says if, if x as a domain is greater than or equal to 4. So here's 4, so the, the piece that is less than 4 doesn't exist. So the actual piecewise function, or the function that's defined by this piecewise function, is this uh, right here, which I'll highlight in yellow. This is the function defined by the piecewise function. It's got three separate pieces, and those pieces that are crossed out don't exist because there's, the domain has been restricted. Uh, so let's look at how that applies to absolute value functions and representing them as piecewise functions. Uh, it says express each absolute value function as a piecewise function. If at any point in time you feel like you want to try it yourself, absolutely go right ahead. Um, what we've looked at in a previous lesson, so in order to define it as a piecewise function, we need to be able to see the pieces, uh, which means we're going to need to see the graph. Uh, right here, y is equal to the absolute value of x. Um, what we looked at as a previous, in a previous lesson is to just graph the non-absolute value function, which is y equals x. That's just uh, a function that looks something like this. And then what we can do is take all of the uh, negative outputs and make them positive because we're taking the absolute value. Okay, so uh, this function looks something like this. Okay, and this piece doesn't exist. As far as the piecewise function goes, maybe I'll choose a different color here. Um, <clears throat> maybe red. You can see that there's two pieces. Um, and the domain restriction, or where the domain changes for those pieces, is where x is equal to 0. Um, if we look at the red piece, what's happened to that red piece is that it is, so our piecewise function would be y is equal to, let me just use a single bracket notation, uh, the red piece is where y is equal to the opposite of x, because what's happened is it's been flipped. So we're looking at this, we're not allowed to use an absolute value function anymore, and we're saying what has happened, Has it? have we flipped it, or in other words, taken the absolute value of it, or not? In, in the red piece's case, what we have done is taking the opposite so it's y is equal to the opposite of that function. And the domain restriction here is when x is less than or equal to 0. Uh, or if you'd rather write it this way, uh, you could write domain restrictions as far as um, from negative infinity to 0 inclusively. Um, that doesn't matter. As far as the blue piece goes, um, that part has not been flipped, or we haven't taken the absolute value of it. So <clears throat> that piece is equal to y is y is equal to x, where x is greater than or equal to 0, or if you'd rather use a different function notation, that's from 0 inclusively to infinity. <clears throat> All 
right, let's look at another example. Again, as we do this more, we'll, we'll be able to understand uh, it with more clarity. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is graph the function. So I'm going to graph the function uh, y is equal to x squared minus 4, the non-absolute value function. Uh, that particular function would look something like this. However, we're trying to graph the absolute value function, which means that all of the um, <clears throat> all of the negative outputs are going to be made positive. So uh, all of these values are going to go above the x-axis and be reflected. So here's our function. Uh, so what you can see at this particular time, and I'll just use highlighter colors, is that we have three pieces. We've got this highlighted red piece. We've got this highlighted green piece, and we've got this highlighted blue piece. So we need to, in order to define the piecewise function, we need to split this into three pieces. So y is equal to, and what you may want to notice is that the only part that has been taken the opposite of is the green piece. Uh, so that's the one where we're going to take the opposite of this function. As far as the red piece goes, that's going to be y is equal to, uh, not the opposite, but just regular um, x squared minus 4, and the domain is restricted at every um, x value below negative 2, so that's where uh, x is less than or equal to negative 2, or if you'd rather represent it in set notation, uh, that would be from negative infinity up to negative 2 inclusively. Um, as far as the next piece goes, the green piece is the opposite of this function here, because we have taken the absolute value of it. So that green piece would be y is equal to the opposite of x squared minus 4 because it's been reflected. And the domain is restricted between values, which is between negative 2 and positive 2. So that would be uh, between negative 2 and positive 2 inclusively. Or you could write it like this, which I'll stop writing in the next example. Um, either way. And finally, the blue piece has not been reflected, so it's just going to be y is equal to uh, x squared minus 4. As far as the domain goes, it's all values above uh, or equal to 2. So that would be uh, x greater than or equal to 2, or you could write the domain as far as uh, from 2 to infinity. Uh, all right, let's do a couple more, and then I'll have you try one on your own. Uh, next one. Define y is equal to the absolute value of negative 2x minus 3 as a piecewise function. So before we can do that again, to be clear, we need to see the graph, see its pieces, and then be able to define its pieces. Um, again, the easiest way for me to do that is to graph the non-absolute value function. Uh, so graph y is equal to negative 2x minus 3. That's already in slope-intercept form. Uh, so we have this here. There's your y-intercept. And a slope of negative 2 would look something like this. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. There we go. Uh, now we need to, because it is an absolute value function, we need to reflect it. So I'll go ahead and do that pretty quickly here. Uh, so as far as this piecewise function goes, we can again see that there's two pieces, so we need to be able to represent each piece in our piecewise function. So that's y is equal to, and you can see that the piece that has been reflected is the blue piece. So the green piece is just going to be the typical y is equal to negative 2x minus 3 piece. Uh, so y is equal to negative 2x minus 3. And as far as your domain goes, I'm just going to write it in the first way using uh, inequality symbols. Uh, domain is restricted, you can see here, at negative 1.5. So it's the green piece is all values, or x has to be less than or equal to negative 1.5, or negative 3 halves, either way you want to put it. As far as the blue piece goes, since it has been reflected, it's the opposite of this function. So it's going to be y is equal to, uh, whoops, you don't need this here y is equal to the opposite of negative 2x minus 3. You could expand the negative in and make it 2x plus 3. Uh, and that uh, domain would be for when x is greater than or equal to negative 1.5. Right, let's do one more together, and then I'll have you try one on your own. Uh, this next one looks like the uh, axes have shifted on me, so I'll just fix those, and then we'll move into it. Uh, this next one is already in... Um, vertex form. So let's go ahead and graph the regular non-absolute value function. So I'm just going to graph y is equal to negative 
uh, x plus 2 squared plus 1. Uh, this particular function has a vertex at negative 2 and positive 1, so that would be right here, and opens down in the typical form. Uh, so over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4, over 3, down uh, 9. Uh, in this particular case, so here's our non-absolute value function. Uh, all of the negative values will be reflected. So what we can see here is, again, that what's going to happen, this needs to be reflected here, and this guy needs to be reflected Ah, yeah, just the numbers have shifted a little bit down there, uh, but we'll get the point here. Okay, uh, same thing on this side. These have been reflected. So what we have here is, hopefully you can see, three pieces. We've got a green piece, a blue piece, and a red piece. Uh, the only piece that has not been flipped is the blue piece. So the green piece is going to be the opposite. Uh, so we're going to have y is equal to... Uh, the green piece is the opposite of negative x plus 2 squared plus 1. And that is uh, when x is less than or equal to negative 3. Uh, the blue piece is has not been reflected, so it's just this function here, which is negative x plus 2 squared plus 1. And that's between negative 3 and negative 1 as far as our domain goes. So we write that. Uh, like this, and as far as our red piece goes, it's the opposite because it's been flipped, so it's the opposite of the non absolute value function. And I would just leave it in that form just to be sure uh, where x is greater than or equal to negative one. All right, let's try one last example. Uh, have you try it yourself if you'd like to. Here it is. <clears throat> Uh, so go ahead and pause the video if you'd like to because I already have the answer and we'll reveal it in about five seconds. Okay, uh, hopefully you've had a chance to try it if that was what you wanted to do. Uh, here is the solution as far as this goes. First thing we want to do is graph the non-absolute value function, which I've put into vertex form, graphed it, and then noticed uh, <clears throat> that I need to reflect the blue piece. So this piece here uh, has been reflected. So there's the function. Uh, the red piece is the typical uh, with domain restrictions between... or uh, at less than or equal to 2. The blue piece has been reflected, so it's the opposite of the non-absolute value function between 2 and 6. And finally, the green piece is the non-absolute value function uh, greater than or equal to 6.